Street. Luke isn't going to let this go. I'm thinking caps on. How do we deactivate Dervil? You want me to steal morphine? Luke's word has to be discredited. I tried to kill Tracy. Mate, that wasn't you. Who was it if it wasn't me? I can't let you do it, Tracy. I can't marry you. How's the post-traumatic stress going? Pretty much textbook. Disrupted sleep patterns, overreacting to small, unexpected stimuli and so on. Mm, poor beggar. Using anything to help you sleep? Those herbal concoctions you mix up? Valerian. Unfortunately, I have to use others to pick me up in the morning. Mm, I use way too much coffee myself. What do you use? A mild ephedra infusion. Like ephedrine? I grow the ephedra sinica plant for my allergies and asthma. Since my abduction, I've also used it as a mild pick-me-up. Any chance I can try some? Just a taste. Come on, you know I'm good for it. I suppose I could spare some of my stash later. You're a true friend, Luke. I don't deserve you. I get that you're freaked out by the way you behaved, but it wasn't you, it was the tumour. It showed what I am, what I can be. You've been ill. You've had this syndrome and the things you said and did were due to that. You don't know what I was like after my mum left us. I was worse than Ty. I wasn't a nice person. Yeah, I get you've had it rough. What, with your mum gone and your dad boozed out of his skull? I was violent. It's in me. No, you realised when you were out of control and you joined up. You did great work in great the Great work? I got so angry with Sinclair I left him to die. That's not how it was. You were thinking of your other men because that's who you are. You're a man who works for the benefit of others. That's why you became such a great nurse. I became a nurse out of guilt. And because I knew all the rules and regulations would keep the real me caged. Oh, Scotty, you need to talk to someone about this. I talked to the neurosurgeon. He said it himself. Delusions may be distorted reality, but they're not random. They're based in the person having them. That's me, Tracy. Paranoid and violent. No. I'm not accepting any of this. You don't have a choice. It's over with us. Now I'd like you to leave. This isn't over. Jennifer! I was wondering if you've planned Callum's next long surgery. All booked in for tomorrow. Who's assisting you? Dr. Anton, my new registrar. You're planning on using the CEO as a learning tool for an intern? I promise you, Callum will be getting safe, careful surgery. I'm sorry, but I think you need to call Chris in on this. That would be overkill. And it is my call who operates. The family would want him to have the best of out of the That would be expected by everyone, all the way up to the DHB. Chris is seriously overqualified for this kind of operation. Good. Let's settle that. Our acting CEO has instructed me that you have to assist on Callum's op. Did she give a reason? I said I was using my registrar. She said that wasn't good enough. Then she hinted that she'd make my life hell if I didn't do as I was told. Making me the meat in the sandwich. Correct. Would it be OK if we just went along with this one? If the non-medically trained acting CEO overruled the consultant surgeon, you mean? Just this once. Her intentions are good. Thin edge of the wedge, Chris. Actually, Jennifer, thank you. I would love to help out with Callum. Thank you for going along with this. I realise I'm treading on some toes. With ski boots, the <clears throat> sort you use crampons on. So it's a date then? Yes. Ah, well, I'll go and tell my registrar. She's pretty annoyed, huh? Surgeons don't like being told what to do at the best of times. Being told by a paper shuffler that's all I am to you. It's the way you shuffle them, the Sharapova of paper shufflers. Thanks. For doing <laughs> Callum's surgery, I mean. Oh, what can I say? I owe him too, and if it makes you feel better, I'd do just about anything to help him out. We've been through so much together. For him to just throw the whole relationship out the window. Uh, Scotty wasn't recovering from surgery. I'd go and sort him out myself. <sighs> Trust me. If I thought a headbutt would do the trick, he'd have the nose splint already. Kia ora. Kia ora. I'm on my way to see Scotty. Anything I should know? That he broke up with me. Because... It's a bright 
protect me. He thinks this illness has revealed the violence within. He doesn't trust himself not to hurt me. But that's not the Scotty you know, is it? No. But then he says that... Go on. He says that after you left, he went off the rails. And that joining the army, becoming a nurse, they're just ways of keeping the anger at bay. Makes sense. <laughs> I mean, I've been surprised that he hasn't gone off at me for the drugs, for leaving him with his dad. He has every right to be angry. Do you want me to have a talk to him? Hey, let me have a shot at it first, eh? What'll you say? I don't know. But I am a trained social worker and his mum. Brooke, the morphine you charted for Mrs Lee, we've drawn it up. I'm just going to give it to her now. Actually, I'm going to see her anyway, so I'll take it to her. You sure? Yeah, on my way now. Some green. I have a small amount of loose ephedra leaves I use to make an infusion. What's this for? Allergic rhinitis. Why can't you say hay fever like normal people? Now these leaves will make up about four cups of a mild stimulant tea. Don't take in conjunction with any other drugs. Herbal or otherwise. Brilliant. Thanks, mate. Herbs for every occasion. What else have you got in there? Any herbs for the love making? One cup in the morning, OK? OK. Now, please, go away. I need to get going home so I can continue my research on the villainous Mr Tintor. After all, really, she's not in pain. She says it's not too bad, and she doesn't like the way the drug makes her feel. Yeah, she told me that. So I tossed it in the shop's bin. Okay then. Here you called it off with Tracy. It's for the best. Because you can't trust yourself, you might lose it and she'd be in the firing line. Yeah. That's a big sacrifice on your part. I can't risk hurting her again. I get it. You've got demons, which is understandable given your lousy childhood. My question is, why aren't you taking that anger out on your lousy mother? You were young. You got into the drugs, you did the wrong thing. Now you're trying to make up for it. <laughs> know how easy it is to give up heroin? It's hard. Yeah, really hard. But I didn't have that same problem with my kids. I just took off, left you with a drunk I knew couldn't look after you. Oh, I had a great old time in Sydney after I left you lot behind. I partied, I did drugs all day, every day. I didn't give a stuff about anyone but myself. Okay. You were messed up, whatever. Why are you telling me this? Because maybe it's about time you stood on your hind legs, boy. I deserted you. I don't approve of what you did, but I do understand it. I don't need your understanding. What I did to you was unforgivable. 
So why throw away a good woman like Tracy and act like a whip dog with me, eh? What's that about? I'll tell you what it's about. After you left us, I grew up and I hurt people. I had to find ways of dealing with that, to repress the anger. I thought I could control it, but I can't. It's in me. I'm stuck with it. And it's all my fault. I caused the anger. I'm the reason you're dumping the woman you love. Yes. That's pathetic. Weak and pathetic. You think I'm weak? Because I try to understand what's happened to me? You have no idea what you put us through. None. So don't you come in here and play the shrink. You have no right. You can stitch that to the bottom of your social work degree. <sighs> That's better. Don't play games with me. It's not a game, son. You need to sort out what's going on in that head of yours. If that includes going ape at me, then do it. Channel that anger in the right direction. Then you get Tracy back in here and beg her to come back to you. Chris! Someone got into my car last night and left this on the passenger seat. There was also a picture left on my computer. A religious picture? No, no, a, a book cover. One of those Pulp Fiction things. Shut up or die. Shut up or die. Where will you spend eternity? Someone's trying to scare me, you see? Or someone like who? My abductors are still around here. They're close. Right. And you've told the police? Well, they think I'm still suffering post-traumatic stress. Which I am, but that does not negate the evidence that I'm still in danger. Why would your abductors threaten you after letting you go? Well, they must know I'm still investigating the Boban Tintor case to find out how he became the NHS patient, William Wilson. Could two slightly odd events simply be coincidence? Well, I've considered the theory, yes. <laughs> yeah. Have you considered taking some time off? I might be scared, but I'm not going to be scared off. I'm only keeping you informed for my own security. Breaking news, Boban Tintor has been spotted in South Africa. Oh, well, that explains Luke's abduction. I kept him quiet until Tintor was out of the country. And released him with all of his fingers intact. He's a lucky man. Well, maybe the bad guys like him as much as we do. Speaking of which, ta-da, Luke's nasal spray. Do you really want to go through with this? It's brilliant. Luke has one of his allergies, takes a snort, acts a bit weirder than usual. His credibility will be shot. What if he gets drug tested? Even better. If he gets tested, it'll be a case of poor Luke dipping into the morphine to get over his post-traumatic stress. We get a fortnight in rehab, and the Wilson Tintor switcheroo will be all forgotten. Luke's record is unblemished. What we're doing is utterly callous. It's utterly my career that's at stake. Where is it, by the way? How much? 10 milligrams of morphine and 10 mils of saline. Half and half. I'll pick it up later, stash it in his bag. Um, where are you going? This is your great plot. Well, every plot needs an evil genius me and a willing minion you. Ciao. Contact details. Are you still staying at Dr. Samuels? Yeah, I am. A wee lucky thing. You get to see him walk about in just a towel. Mind you, yeah. I can see Brody, um, so. Was there anything else you wanted? No, that's it. See you. Mm. Sorry to disturb. You're not. I wanted to let you know I've arranged for Chris to assist because he is our best surgeon and you can yell at me if you like, but please just let him do it. Why are you taking such an interest? Is it guilt? I'm not just going to stop caring and... Yeah, yeah. A little bit of guilt. Good morning. I hear the mighty Warner's doing mere skin grafts now. Are you hear correctly. Are you happy with that? Delirious. 
Although that could be the morphine. What's going on here? I'm assisting on your father's surgery. You're kidding, right? Your father will have two top-class surgeons working on it. I'll leave you to it. Brief me later. So did you manage to get through to him at all? I got him to vent, which is good. But then he asked if he could come and stay when he gets out. He doesn't want to come home. He thinks he's still a risk to you. I told him it's against rehab policy for him to stay with me. I'll get him to stay with me, yeah? Yeah. I uh, guess. Thanks, TK. Hey, don't worry. I'll come round. So Luke's pulling all this medication out of his bag, and I'm like, just how bad is this post-trauma thing? What's he taking and what for? Well, he's having trouble sleeping, which is fair enough, so he's taking something for that. But then he needs help getting going in the mornings. Uppers and downers. Great combo. His work's exemplary. I'm not complaining. I'm just concerned. He came to me with some fairly paranoid stuff earlier. Yeah. No, he's convinced he's receiving death threats via his screensaver and a flyer he claims was planted in his car. So he still thinks the guys that grabbed him are going to come back? Which, who knows? It could be possible. But it's more likely a terrible case of mistaken identity. Which makes this all the more distressing. I was yawning. Luke was onto it straight away. Here, try this. What is it? Ephedra. He grows it. Mm. It's not illegal. But it makes you wonder if anything else he's taking might be. I'll cut to the chase. I'm worried about the level of post-traumatic stress you've been under. I know you're self-monitoring. What I'm asking now is if you're self-medicating. Yes. Right. What are we talking here? Herbal preparations for the most part, plus some antihistamine for hay fever. Nothing to worry about there. You're not taking sleeping pills? Herbal only. Valerian. Anything else? Uppers? I have an ephedra infusion in the mornings. Nothing else? No. Uh, can I ask where this is going? Well, I need to know you're all right and fully functional as a friend and a colleague. I remain concerned for my safety, but I can assure you in all other ways I'm perfectly fine. If you do find that you're not coping, make me your first stop, yes? Of course. Hey, is, uh, is this privet? No! Oh, yes! Stop waving it around! Sorry, of course. Can you believe someone's grown this next to the hospital? Idiots. Was Luke okay? Why? He just left here really twitchy. What happened? We had a talk. Did you say he should be drug tested? Well, I'll check him out around lunchtime. If he's still erratic, I'll definitely test him. OK. Luke's primed and set to go. I just need to plant the nasal spray. This is so wrong. He's not working today. He's just going over patient notes. The act's funny. The worst that happens is they find narcotics in his blood. He gets counselling and a month off. Quite frankly, he needs it. Look, I know this isn't my finest moment. The lurid screensaver, the flyer, it's all so tacky. Yeah, yeah. Boy, didn't they work? Yeah, he's a nervous wreck. Well done. Oh, look, I'll make it up to him. Take him for a trip on the boat with whichever female we can line up. I'm sure there's someone in the hospital here that'll find him attractive. It's not too late to pick out of this, you know. I have to discredit him. He's too close to figuring out who created the false William Wilson file, and if he does... You really like to walk a tightrope, don't you? Well, the life half-lived is no life. And we're having fun, aren't we? In a heart-thumping, stomach-churning kind of a way. You make a good sidekick, you know. Oh, you're not so bad yourself. For a minute, I thought I was going to lose you over this. And that would matter? Yeah. Yeah, it would. I can't think of anyone in my life who would have stuck by me through this. It's all about you. It was. Now it's about you too. What are you trying to say? <laughs> I know you. I tell you I love you, you run a mile. Might do. Might not.
sorry. That's OK. I'm just declaring our eternals. In fact, I was this close to proposing. Now the moment's ruined. I never know when you're being serious. No. It's what you love about me, isn't it? Hey, sorry about um, waving that privet in front of you before. Well, so you should. I was just trying to track down my spray. Could have sworn it was in my... I'm going mad. <laughs> I swear, either she goes or I do. Well, right now, Rachel runs the entire hospital. Exactly. So I don't want Dad going back to work and then there she is. Her and Warner. She should so quit. Well, maybe Dad will quit. Do we have to worry about this now? I should just tell Rachel to shove her job. On the other hand, Rachel was the one who got the best surgeon in the country, which, yes, happens to be Chris Warner, to do Dad's op. Like it or not, she still cares. Yeah, right. The priority at the moment is that Dad gets better. Yeah, so the last thing he needs is Rachel hanging around rubbing it in that he's been dumped. We're just going to take your dad to theatre. Thank you. Anyway, hey, Dad is still in love with Rachel, so who knows, maybe having her around might make him feel better, OK? So, tonight? I just want to take you home and eat you up. <laughs> Not so loud. <laughs> Hey, speaking of romance, you know that weird speech therapist with the lisp? Walks around reading, bumping into things? Yeah. Would she be great for Luke or what? Um, maybe. She reads science magazines. I saw her laughing in an article on quantum mechanics. Does she like tall, pale, bald men? Who cares? She wears way thick glasses. Luke will appear to her in romantic soft focus. <laughs> What are you doing? Dr. Matthews is still in with the triple A, so I said I'd help out. Uh, but you shouldn't. <sighs> Why not? Rest, you need rest. Uh, it's supposed to be a day off. No cope. And our esteemed leader needs to go nine eyes. Did you see that? He is hoovering up that nasal spray. He's as high as a kite and in charge of an anesthetic machine. What are we going to do? The works looks at some of the many incarnations of Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights, including a theatre production currently running in Dublin's Gate Theatre this Friday at 8.30. Next today, Doctors.